we are very grateful to have such a splendid uh, stellar uh, panelists for our session today. And we have uh, some of our colleagues from our global team also joining in. So good morning to them and good afternoon to all of you. Those who don't know me, I am Debanjana Chaudhary. I'm the India Country Director for Power for All. And Power for All is a global organization working towards ending energy poverty. It is such a privilege to welcome you all to the webinar today, where we are going to discuss about the state of rural health infrastructure in terms of clean electricity and energy. Before that, I will just take a few minutes, a couple of minutes to share a little bit of overview about who we are. So Power for All is an organization that advances renewables and decentralized electrification solutions as, as the fastest, most cost-effective and sustainable approach to universal energy access. And here in India, we work in a very collaborative manner with our partners at the national and the subnational level. We create roadmaps for increasing access to quality electricity via DRD solutions, in health, agriculture, and uh, also in terms of employment. We also do a lot of evidence-based work in order to support our advocacy work. So we create an evidence in the DRE sector, be it employment, gender parity, health infrastructure, and agricultural needs. And today we are gathered here to discuss the state fact sheet, which we have recently launched in the global sphere. And this is the first time we are launching with our audience in India. And understand from all the eminent speakers like yourselves, what it takes to create a robust roadmap for solarizing healthcare infrastructure. So before uh, I hand over the baton to my colleague Ashwini Ashok, who will be facilitating the entire program, I again welcome you all and thank you for joining at, for such an important discussion that holds key to achieving a lot of healthcare parity and providing equitable access. Over to you, Ashwini. Thank you, Damanjana. Uh, that was quite crisp and to the point. So, uh, Johar from my side, and I welcome you all for this event today. As, as has already been pointed out by Damanjana, we are taking this uh, very important initiative to actually, uh, actually solarize the health centers in the state. And to just brief, to be brief about this context, I'm going to share a very short presentation to you, which I'm going to present right now. Just a moment. Devanjana, I'm not able to actually present right now. Is it possible for you to actually share it? Yeah, oh. the fact sheet. Yeah. Uh, the whole presentation as well. Oh, wait, I think I'll be able to do it. Okay. Yes, I'll be able to do it. So I think my screen is visible to all, right? Yes, Ashwini. Yes, thank you. So uh, just to set the context on why we are doing this and how we are going to achieve this, we have quite an eminent speakers with us who would, who would be going to highlight their points. And they would be guiding us on many other aspects as well. We have great panelists uh, with us and just to just talk about the context for Jharkhand, how it's going to actually help the state and how we are looking forward to it. There is a short presentation with us. So what we are going to do is we are going to present a short health fact sheet which we had prepared with us, the link of which we have I've shared in my chat box. You can go over through that as well. Just I'll talk briefly about the health status of the Jharkhand and how DRE could actually help and what are the key action points which we should look forward to actually uh, take this initiative forward. So, so, 
Yes. So this is a short fact sheet. If you can see, uh, this is the fact sheet based on rural health statistics uh, released by government of India. So this statistics basically speaks about the health status and the health scenario of Jharkhand. This is something which is short and crisp and we do it all the time. And this helps to actually all the stakeholders to know what is the current status, even the government can actually take the informed decision based on this. So rather than going into a, a large document of and reading thousands of pages, it is better to actually get it at a smaller point. And that is why we prefer to have these kind of short fact sheets for us. And this is something which we are, we are launching uh, for the first time in Jharkhand so that this is this becomes a booklet for you or this becomes a handy sheet for you where you can actually have a look and you can take uh, judgmental decisions based on that. So uh, probably you might not be able to see it properly, but uh, the link in the chat box, uh, there is a link in the chat box which would lead you to that. Uh, I will discuss key points which we have in the fact sheet. Uh, so in Jharkhand over, there are over 4,000 rural health centers in the rural areas and probably 50% of the health subcenters do not have access to electricity. So this data might not look great knowing that the state has already achieved its 100% electrification, right? And still 50% of the health centers are not electrified. And to add to it, there is immense uh, droppage of electricity, there are immense cut, there is high side effects in the state. So it has unreliable supply of electricity throughout the state and the people living in the Jharkhand must be aware of it. And as per a report published by ICIP, electricity is available only 50% of the time. So that is not great. And this is something uh, which is also, which also brings us to a point of how electrification can actually change the entire status of the state and present COVID we have seen the importance of health subcenters. The COVID has actually brought out the cracks in the health department. It has actually brought us the fact how health services can actually help save lives. And with this unreliable supply of electricity, more than 38 million people do not have a critical and basic access to health services. So this is something which is alarming and this should be uh, addressed very quickly so that we are better prepared for any other circumstances such as COVID in the future, right? So 72 or 70% 70 of the PHCs, the primary health centers, operate on a regular basis 24 by 7. But for operating 24 by 7, it is very much required that they have reliable supply of electricity. So if we talk, if we only talk about the burden the health uh, sector or the health facilities are facing is that one people means every 10,000 people have only one health facilities to cater to. So this is something huge. And that is why one of the key reason why health services are not apt to the requirement of the community. It is very much required to have means Access to electricity is important, right? This is, there is something I, in this panel, I don't think anyone would disagree to, but having a better access to uh, electricity would actually improve situations. The infant and maternal mortality rates is relatively higher in the rural areas as compared to urban counterparts. And as I already said, that large numbers, more than 60% of the 60 to 70% of the health centers are in the rural areas. West Singhum, Pakur, Sahib Ganj, Buddha, Lohardaka. These are some of the districts which have been worst performance in the state of health. And if I, if I bring down to one very essential points, there is an IPHS guidelines issued by government of India, which all the health centers need to address to. But for Jharkhand, there are none there are no health centers which actually follow these lines. And this is the state, not only in Jharkhand, but it, it, is, it is the state all over India. And only 13% of the PSCs or 8% of the CHCs, the community health centers actually follow those guidelines. So those guidelines are very essential because they point out what are the minimum criteria that you need to have for a fully functional health center at any community, at any state, at any 
any place over the country. And this shortage, this shortage of access of electricity can be achieved through DRE, right? DRE stands for Decentralized Renewable Energy and DRE can be of all sorts of thing. It can be through mini grids, it can be through standalone systems, it can be through productive use of energy applications. So it has multiple aspects, right? Access to electricity is not required for a health center to function properly, but it is also required to better save lives. It is required for neonatal care. It is required for childbirths in the night. It is required for refrigerations, vaccines, bloods, the cold chain, which has been highlighted in this uh, COVID times as well. It is required for cleaning. It is required for sterilization, sanitization, powering the medical equipments. And it is very much required to for staff retention. Staff retention is a key is a key uh, to provide better and timely access to electricity, uh, access to health services because it has been seen that many of the health staffs or the health professionals choose to stay away from the health centers, and this actually creates a problem when there is a when there is a demand when there is a need and people are not able to reach on time and this could affect lives right so they also need proper facilities near them and if they are placed better placed near the health centers it can actually save lives of many so as i have already said jharkhand rural health care is overstressed as more than 10000 has only one health centers on them 10000 people with only one health centers to admit to that is something which is uh, which is not very good for any prop any good uh, health services in the state so we need power supply and it is critical to improve health and dre can do it swiftly affordably and have a sustainable approach as well dre why DRE is a good solution because it does not require long transmission lines, it does not require a lot of planning. You can only install directly through a, a solar rooftop, can only be installed on the, on the roof of the health center as per the requirement of the health center. And it can also be uh, powered through mini grids as well. So it has multiple approach and to add to it, we need an integrated approach from both from the health and the energy department. Just to inform you all, uh, today we are joined by multiple SNAs from Chhattisgarh, from West Bengal and other states as well. We have doctors and professionals uh, who are also uh, who are also being a part of this whole session. So it would be great for them also, and it would be learning for a state like Jharkhand as well to how to take this forward. The state health budget for Jharkhand had decreased by 3% last year, right? So budget is a constraint, but how to cater to that budget? There is a fund called District Mineral Foundation Fund, DMF funds, which is a kind of levy, which is, uh, which is put for minings of the minerals in the state. And it is applicable to all over the country. Uh, for Jharkhand, as of now, uh, for this year, we have more than $1 billion with us. And 48% of those DMF fund is still unutilized. So that is something uh, we should actually look forward to. We as, as in not uh, power for all, but we as a group, all of you should look forward to actually make that happen. So that large amount of these DMF funds could be utilized. And these DMF funds are meant to be utilized in the respective districts for the betterment of health services and the betterment of livelihoods in the state or in the districts. As for the CSR, CSR law, there is also a mandate to invest 2% of their earnings in the community projects. And few, a few of the organizations are already doing it in the state in this state as well. And this is something we need. We also need to cater to. Uh, as I said all earlier as well, we have an energy department who looks into this. We have Jerida who is actually 
revolving all those projects around this solar solarization etc but what has happened is that this responsibility has not been shared this responsibility has largely been taken by the energy department themselves and this is something which is not a very sustainable solution if health department also do, does not take an onus on it health department needs to take the onus the responsibility of owning the system as well so that this system can actually operate for the next 25 years or the next for the whole life of the project which is generally 25 years for this a good operation and maintenance is required for this because generally what happens after this five years of completion of uh, operation and maintenance contract generally the system starts to fail and that creates a bad name for this industry as well and this is very simple and probably the speakers who are going to speak after me they would be highlighting more on this how simple it is and how we can take it forward so what we are looking what action should we take so here we're only looking to collaborate with with all the CSOs with all the developers and in collaboration in union with all of you we look forward to institu institutionalize the diary in the health sector this can be done through various aspects through driving awareness through uh, removing the stigma uh, with a good round of collaboration because one person or one organization won't be sufficient to actually take this forward we as a union could actually take this forward because we don't have presence in all the districts the 24 districts but there are many organizations who might have the presence in such districts and we need to come together and that is why we are uh, we are hoping and we are we are also trying to make a health task force for the state of jharkhand who could actually take this work of institutionalizing DRE in the state of Jharkhand. And this, this can be done in a more sustainable way with sustainable business models, with energy efficient equipments and system capacity. In my last discussion with one of the health center which was solarized in Bihar, uh, the doctor pointed out how solarization of health center actually helped them millions of rupees just because uh, their equipments were functioning properly and there were no uh, failures of the equipments due to fluctuation of the voltages. So this is something which every health centers to health centers should look forward to, should institutionalize DRE for better access and quality access of power in the system and thus to provide better health services to the people living in the state. With that, I'd like to close this uh, session for uh, this context setting and I'll call upon others prominent speakers and I'll let and rest my words on that. So we we today with us have eminent panelists who are going to speak on various fronts. They have immense experience and in the sector they're doing great. So first of all, I'd like to call I'd like to uh, introduce you to Vinitha Gopal, who is the founder and CEO of ASAR. She excels as, at developing strategies, planning campaigns, and building collaborative platforms for the change. Vinitha has campaigned on a range of environmental and social justice issues in India. Over the last 20 years, she has led several campaigns on climate change, pollution at Greenpeace India. Vesi also served as interim executive director. We have Ramapati Kumar, founder and CEO of Seed. Rama has more than 22 years of experience in the field of policy, framework, and regulation in the field of clean energy, environment, energy access, etc. He is an expert in public policy and strategic planning. He has contributed significantly in the areas of clean energy, climate change, and environmental protection, trade, trade, waste, and international development finance. And next with us, we have Sanjeev Jain, which I think needs no introduction. So Sanjeev Jain is the chief engineer at CREDA, uh, Chhattisgarh Renewable Energy Development Agency with over 35 years of experience in the renewable energy and energy conservation sector. Uh, 
He has executed various world-renowned projects such as installation of Asia's largest biggest solar water heating systems, so, uh, first wind farm projects at Devas, in addition to multiple uh, mini grid solar pumps for irrigation and drinking purposes as well. Mr. Sanjeev is the winner of State Energy Conservation Award 2008 and 2015 by Ministry of Power Government of India. He is also a winner of International Award on Sustainable Health and Energy 2018 from Asden Trust, London, United Kingdom. Next to chair, we have Devnath Bera, who is founder and man managing director of Ranchi Partners Management Consultants Limited. He is credited with design, supply, installation, commissioning of Jharkhand State first grid connected rooftop solar power plant in the residential segment. Devnath Ji has returned to India after 20 years of working in US on IT strategy as principal advisor for many Fortune 500 companies in the Wall Street. He has also worked with Hale for 10 years and commissioned more than 3,500 uh, power plants all over, all across the country. In addition to that, we have Mr. Mukesh Kumar, who is executive electrical engineer at Jareda. Mukesh ji has more than 15 year, years of experience in the energy sector and has been the key person to handle Jareda's day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day -day programs and schemes. And he's the key person to take the mini grids and rural electrification work, solar work uh, in the state of Jharkhand. Then we have Akansa Saklani, Senior Project Associate, Energy WRI, India. Akansa is a GIS expert with energy program at WRI India. To visualize the energy access and development situation in Indian state, she is leading the creation of energy access maps that shows electrification data and overlays that with socioeconomic conditions of the states. Akansa has worked extensively in health finance and governance project where she used geographical mapping analysis to help and improve public delivery in the health sector. And last but not the least, we have Sahab Javeri, Program Manager Research and Learning from Selco Foundation. Selco Foundation has been working towards strengthening la last minute health delivery for improved resilience of communities by powering health infrastructure with sustainable energy and shifting to energy efficient equipment and buildings. Sahab has been working for the last five years with the foundation to take this initiative further all over the country. So with this, uh, I like, I'm just welcoming all the participants and eminent speakers for this session. And I'll now like to call upon uh, Sahab Javeri. So Sahab, if you, are you able to hear me right? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Thanks, Ashwin. I got a bit confused with the agenda. Yes. So, uh, Sahab, uh, since uh, Selco has been working considerably in this sector and uh, solarization, um, we would like to know how solarization of the health centers has been perceived in the state of Jharkhand and India as well, and request you to share the key highlights and the learnings in this path over the last few years. Over to you, Sahab. No, thanks. Thanks, Ashwin. Um, thank you all of you for taking this time out and uh, convening and thank you to Power for All for conducting this program. Uh, it is an important discussion and as we've seen in the last uh, couple of years with the pandemic, the need to strengthen health facilities has become more urgent. And uh, the way that the sector is moving now is, is also picking up a lot of speed. So the kind of work that uh, Selco was doing in the past five, seven years, the work that Creda has done earlier now has become more relevant. Uh, it's uh, picking up speed with a lot more takers. Um, and uh, we're really excited about this as well. Uh, and great that Jharkhand uh, as a group is also coming together because uh, like Ashwini said as well, Jharkhand also requires this as much as all the other uh, states that have incorporated some of this work already and I'll take a little bit of time to maybe talk about that work of ours. So Selco, for those of you who are not um, aware of uh, the kind of work that we've been doing, we're a group that's been around for more than 25 years now working on solar energy solutions in India at the last mile for healthcare, livelihoods, 
and many other areas of developmental activity. And specifically within the uh, sector of healthcare, we've been looking at powering healthcare facilities, looking at energy efficiency of various health services um, since about five, seven years. And uh, most recently, we are now on track, based on all the learnings that we've had, we are now on track to implementing um, district level blanketing programs for healthcare across uh, 10 districts of India. Uh, in the Northeast, in Odisha, Jharkhand remains a key priority for us, as well as Karnataka and, and a couple of other states. So we've picked up these 10 districts where we're looking at three to 500 centers across the entire district, all from sub-centers, PHCs, CHC subdivision hospitals and district hospitals and solar powering them 100%. Um, this comes out of a lot of work where, which has been very closely driven by both health and energy actors. Um, Ashwini, can I request you to maybe pull up uh, the fourth slide of my presentation uh, sure. just for uh, reference, the fifth slide. So, um, Something that we've been seeing in, in, in a long time in the health energy nexus is that uh, health actors are not very well aware that what role energy access can play. And uh, the fifth slide, Ashwin. Maybe you can just skip through. Next one. Previous one, yeah, previous. Number five. Yeah. So what we've seen is that uh, the previous one, yeah, this one's great. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So what we've seen is that the health side is not very well aware of what role energy can play and the energy departments and uh, are not uh, fully uh, designing systems that are uh, conducive to uh, the healthcare need for that particular level of healthcare delivery. Now from the IPHS guidelines, we know that the health stack in India is distributed in a certain way and each of these have specific needs. So how can the energy sector be more aware of healthcare needs at different levels? And how can the health sector be more aware of the impact of energy and what it takes to own and maintain uh, systems that, uh, that are being deployed with these health facilities? Both these actors like Ashwini also alluded to need to work really closely together. And that's what we've been doing in all of these states. So we've been working in Manipur, Meghalaya, Odisha, Jharkhand with selected partners, as well as Karnataka, where the health sector, the NHMMD, as well as energy stakeholders in the state are coming together to power health facilities. Um, if you could move ahead, Ashwin, to the next slide. And, and um, the impacts are really visible. If it's whether we look at cold chain or we look at maternal childcare, right from the community level. So at the grassroots level, how can we, on the picture on the right that you see is a and m that is using um, a maternal child health kit that is powered by solar energy that uses a portable lithium ion battery to provide the four ANCs at the doorstep of tribal communities. And these are typically the conditions that we see in Dharpur. Uh, communities are largely similar, like we see tribal communities in Odisha or in other parts of the Northeast. And having doorstep services is really important. The picture at the bottom shows a vaccine carrier. So this is an active vaccine carrier. A regular vaccine cold storage blue box that we see has a particular holdover period that you can store vaccines for, for about four hours. But, and that increases transaction costs quite a lot. ANMs need to go and come back quite a lot. A technology like this that is powered by solar, better technology, phase change material, helps you store vaccines for eight to 10 hours without them being destroyed at all. And that greatly reduces transaction costs. There are many such examples, cold chain at health facilities. If you could go to the next slide. Even at public health centers, sub-centers, looking at the different services that are being provided. So can we, what we've done is we've plotted the different health services at various levels of healthcare delivery and designed systems already. So right now, because of the work that we've been doing so far and all the scaling of the systems that we've been doing in these 10 districts, like I mentioned, templates are ready. 
So if lab services are being provided, then how can solar energy systems be designed? If maternal and child care is being considered, how can it be designed? In district hospitals, if we're considering operation theaters to be powered, autoclaves to be powered, how can it be designed? Uh, and, uh, and all of these templates are ready. And currently, we're preparing guidelines, not just on technical models, but also how can we make sure that these systems are owned, owned properly and maintained in a way. So how can we make sure that a certain pool of money is kept aside so that we ensure that these systems are well maintained? Uh, we've had, as an industry, a lot of poor experiences in this particular uh, this, uh, in this particular sector and uh, making sure that we have enough contingency plans to maintain systems is really critical. How can communities like uh, Arogya Raksha Samitis from different, uh, from the community come to own these systems, allocate a part of their funds towards the maintenance, regular maintenance of solar energy systems that are already available with them are some of the models that we've already deployed in a lot of areas. I just like to end um, my, uh, uh, so we are available for all kinds of technical advice, for all kinds of knowledge support. And we really look forward to working in Jharkhand. In the past three years, we've implemented a number of projects with different stakeholders in Jharkhand, a lot of NGO run facilities. We have one partner who has joined us here uh, Father David Vincent from St. Joseph's Hospital, who will speak to you shortly, give you an example of how solar energy is working uh, in uh, his hospital and um, and what it took, what it takes to maintain it, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, we are now currently working with the DMF to look at how uh, the district of Bokaro can also be uh, uh, looked at as one within our district blanketing efforts. Uh, so those are some levels of progress. I'd be happy to engage with uh, uh, with all of you all to see how we can take some of this programming activity forward. I'd like to end my presentation by showing you a few more pictures. So if you could, Ashwini, if you could just uh, help me move uh, to the right. So on the left, you see here is a, an energy efficient baby warmer. So this consumes far lesser energy than a conventional energy, than a conventional baby warmer. This is what we typically place in a PHC. Uh, it we understand health energy needs uh, by looking at the kind of equipment that is placed in the health facility, the kind of energy efficiency of these equipments. If you could move right, so we are looking at by 2026, can we capture 25,000 to 30,000 health centers? And the guidelines for these also we're trying to uh, put together with the help of the NHSRC at the central level. Um, and um, solar is applicable for all types of health facilities. And these next few pictures will show you. So this is a tertiary healthcare facility, a district hospital. If you go right, uh, then the next slide. Could scroll down. Yeah, this is a secondary healthcare facility or a CHC, primary healthcare facilities, all that have been powered 100% using solar and work very well. If you could move to the next, next slide. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think that that's there. We have a lot of ready information already to share with all of you. And uh, happy to engage in a lot of deep dive discussions with those of you who are looking to take these programs forward where our learnings are already available for you to take forward in terms of technical designs and models. I'll hand over to uh, um, uh, Father David, who for the next uh, four to five minutes will quickly narrate to you how uh, in his hospital in Jharkhand, solar energy is playing a critical uh, role to actually completely remove diesel expenditures that are there in the health facility and also reduce their grid uh, electricity charges that have, that were there previously. So uh, over to you, Father David, for uh, the next couple of minutes, if you could please uh, share your experiences with the group. Thank you, Javeri. Uh, good afternoon to everyone present here. This is Father David Vincent the director of St. Joseph's Hospital, Bilaipadi, 
Jamsapur in the state of Jharkhand. Jawa, when I speak about power for all, the topic which we are discussing on it, that gives me a lot of opportunity to speak how this power is important. Of course, we can speak about power in different ways, but I am speaking about the solar power. I took over this hospital as a director when the COVID was at the peak situation, the first wave. And the St. Joseph Hospital, Belay Party was not sufficient enough. I mean, economically, it was very difficult to run that hospital. And the district administration took our hospital as the COVID care center for the entire period. And during this time, when I went through the power consumption, the electricity bill that was going up, so much it was. And then we were not in a position to pay. So when I was discussing one of my friends together with our manager, Mr. Vicky, we came across the Selco Foundation. And gladly we approached Selco Foundation that in what way they can help to reduce the power consumption through generator and other way to solar power. And Selco Foundation took it up immediately and then they acted upon. Though I thought it may take a year, year, but then proud to say that Selco Foundation took it up very fast, very fast. Within three to four months, it got into action and within the, that stipulated team period of three months, everything got into action. And I am proud to say at this moment to all of you that almost the God-given solar is important. Very rarely we use God's power, the natural energy that it is there. And Selco Foundation has helped us to utilize the same. They install the solar power system, 12 kV in our hospital. And the power consumption, which we are paying the bill of almost closer to 75 to 80,000 in a month. Of course, in our campus, not only hospital, we have got nurses quarters, doctors quarters, and also various other workers are involved. Though we are using the power in the hospital itself, the bill was coming almost closer to 50 to 52,000. And now, after the installation of this power, solar power, it has come down to around five to 6,000. It is something miracle, something yes. wonderful, which Selco has done it. So yeah. I thank Selco for all that it is done. And I also encourage others to participate in the power for all when it is there. Solar is very much important. It is God-given energy. So let us make use of it. And I thank Selco Foundation and all my associates, my own office staff, and the people who collaborated with Selco Foundation to install mm -hmm. the fast manner for our benefit and for the benefit of all, the health for all, and we are doing the same service to all. I thank, thank you. the entire panel for having given me this opportunity to speak to you and speak about thank the solar and power for all. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, Ashwini, just a minute. Um, we're also looking at uh, with the district administration of Koti to power sub-centers in Koti right now. And there are a lot of great examples in Odisha already. So I also invite all of you to come visit some of these health facilities, see how solar is working well in Odisha, in Sambalpur, in Kalahandi, in Jamshedpur, in uh, other parts of Jharkhand, uh, and uh, experience it for yourselves. Over to you. Uh, thank you, thank Father, you. for thank sharing you. experience. And over to you, Ashwin. Thank, thank you, you. Saab, and thank you, Father David, uh, for sharing this wonderful uh, experience. And definitely, uh, solar can actually help the whole of entire health value chain, and solarization can uh, actually affect in a great way in improving the health services in the state. Right. With this, uh, I'll now uh, call upon our next panelist, and also I'd like to announce uh, to all the speakers to please be mindful of the time and please try to be as precise as possible and uh, please deliver your uh, notes uh, within to seven to eight minutes of your time. So I'll now like to call upon Devnath Vera. Uh, Devnath Vera. Uh, Devnath ji, uh, you are a developer in the state, right? And you have, an, you have had an opportunity to actually solarize the health centers in Jharkhand so far. And from developer's point of view, uh, 
I like to know uh, what are the key challenges and opportunities you have had in this phase, and considering that there were no subsidies across these projects, right? So this is something which uh, probably all the health centers would look forward to as well. Over to you, Devnaji. Thank you so much, Ashwini. I really appreciate uh, for inviting me to this uh, webinar. And I must congratulate the Banjana for bringing out, uh, like you're acting like a think tank and bringing out all the stakeholders in the state uh, together under one roof. What is significant here is this should not be just with this program, it should be sustainable down the line. I also like to congratulate uh, our fellow uh, uh, engineers uh, from the government side, uh, Mr. Jain from, from Creda and also uh, Mukeshi, whom with, I, with whom I work very closely. Thank you for joining because you are the one who put government's policy into place and make things happen and uh, make things available for us. Uh, first of all, I also want to, uh, on top of it, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Zaveri for speaking well. I might cover some of the points, but for sake of time, I'll condense it to and stick it to the, my topic of uh, uh, challenges and opportunities uh, in the solar system. So let's uh, talk with the challenges first of all. It is the, the perception is a big challenge. You know, over a period of time, uh, Jharkhand or any other state, the doctors and the stakeholders have come over the fact, can solar really run my equipments? Can they run MRI? Can they run CTs? Can they run the ventilators? Can they run the oxygen plant? Yes, the answer to it is yes. But more education is required and uh, with the help of think tanks and also Mr. Ramapati Kumar in the uh, audience uh, who have also been very instrumental in bringing this awareness in the state of Jharkhand and Bihar. The other challenges are key stakeholders. Most of the time, it is the hospital administrators or the policy makers or the financiers think that they are the key stakeholders, wrong. The key stakeholder in any solarizing of health center is the patient. We forget that we have to give quality of service to the patient. Any hospital runs and is in business because the patients are there. And we sometimes forget, we give uh, you know, cut notes that there's not enough finances, it's too far away. So this is one of the biggest challenge. We need to come across that and our prime stakeholder here is the patient. Third, the quality of service. We sometimes, you know, the, the, the population in India is moving from rural to urban, why? Because they have got better facilities. But we sometimes forget why at the rural when we have our, uh, just now, uh, Mr. Ashwini mentioned about 10,000 uh, centers uh, all across uh, Jharkhand, uh, PHCs and India, why these are not being utilized? Because as Zaveri pointed out rightly, there's not enough power because for vaccine people have to run away, for injections they can't be stored. So I won't go more into that. Next. The challenge is understanding the ecosystem. What is the ecosystem here in, 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 in solarizing the uh, healthcare system? Ecosystem here is patient who needs services, doctors who needs, to be, who needs to be available, and an infrastructure which can take care of all the requirements of uh, infrastructural requirement and give them the service. Fourth, the financiers, whether it's government or the private, if it's a private hospital, they need to see. They also need to understand that, okay, they are giving patient services and they are also making money, but at the same time, they need to understand that they have to break even at a point where they give quality of service at lesser profit perhaps. And that is something is a quality of sacrifice in any individuals or especially a society of India. We need to put sacrifice in front of ourselves to make this thing happen. Fourth is the inflation. We put up a system, it runs this much of power, but suddenly the power price goes high or power price goes further high and inflation we are not able to take care. So we cut the cost by reducing or keeping the patient services alive. What are the opportunities? And this is the great thing that, uh, wonderful thing that I'm excited about. Plenty of opportunities. We haven't touched the tip of the iceberg yet. Leave alone Jharkhand, the whole of the country. Whether it's from Leh, Ladakh, Kanyakumari, Kashmir or Jharkhand or remote places of, uh, you know, Simdega or uh, Chai Basa in, in, in Jharkhand or even uh, Lohar Daga, which came up uh, during Ashwini's uh, speech or, or the uh, turnaround. Patient turnaround time. What is the patient turnaround time? At the current stage, a person who's falling sick at a far away places takes like maybe like 15 to 20 days to get cured because he doesn't have the facility. He goes to the nearest Mofasil area, from Mofasil area moves on to the next and comes to the city, spends money, hotel charges, this charges. And what happens? A patient who could have been cured in like two days, it takes about a week to 10 days time. What are the other opportunities for CHCs, primary health center, which is the government or the private? Branding is an opportunity, my friends. Branding, and how does this branding comes? 
Branding will come only if you are known to patient and the patient's family that you can give service and you can be treated. And how that is possible? Who is holding this up? The holding is up is the infrastructure requirement of power. Most of the CHCs are dry and empty because they don't have power most of the time. And forget about in the night, there's darkness. Nobody, no pregnant lady is going to go for the OPS journey for at those places. Either they do at home or they go to the nearest hospital or the service or the, or the city areas. So how does this opportunity help us? It helps us reducing the last mile to healthcare. Just like government is saying it's fully electrified, electrify, being, bringing the last mile to the, bringing, uh, reducing the gap of last mile to the nearest consumer. Same thing, solarizing can help reduce the last mile to healthcare in remote parts of the country. Leave alone remote plot. Many hospitals, even in urban centers, they don't have all the facilities running because either the bills are too high or it's just the power is not there. The other option is shorter ROI, return on investment on solarizing. I'll get to that slide later. Gaining control on expenses and converting into residual. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we sometimes forget that we think that solarizing is going to raise the investment costs. True, solar is giving a value addition to services of people's life and, uh, and the country in general. So it has value. Anything of value will cost money. Yes, it costs money in the initial phases, but I can tell you how within five to six years, you can get a return on investment. And this money that you were spending, like Dr. Father Benson just said, can actually can be used as a cash receivable for the hospital to do much more uh, uh, important works for the patient or the hospital. I'll get onto that slide later. Sustainability of the quality of patient services. This is an opportunity. We can help make patient services sustainable. And the number one reason for patient services not sustainable is which doctor wants after having studied five years plus two years of MD wants to go a remote village and serve when there's no electricity, no fan, nothing. They don't want to do that. They want provision quality of life. They want to improve others' quality of life, but all at the same time, they want to improve their quality of life. So there's not enough incentives for doctors to go to remote far-flung areas and, and give the service. And what is stopping them? Because the hospitals or primary health cancer does not have any kind of electricity there. See. This is a slide after a lot of research and a lot of working in, in Jhaka in the last uh, three, four years that I'm here from US, I've worked this out. The numbers that would chase you no matter what you do for a mid-sized hospital, including the primary care. 95B here suggests this. I'm giving an example for a 95 bedded hospital that we solarized and it's running off the grid. Five kilowatt goes for pump loads, 10 kilowatt goes for the oxygen plants, 10 kilowatt for the cath lab, 15 kilowatt for the AC load, 20 kilowatt for the ward load, 70 kilowatt for the CT load, and if they have a blood bank by any chance, it takes another 40 kilowatt of load. On top of that, they run two into 63 kilowatt of DG, and it's running seven by 24. The hospital that I'm talking to about, where I, where we installed 100 kilowatt power plant, was running on two into 63 kilowatt of DG expense, and monthly expense for the hospital was three lakhs per month. No jokes, 2.5 to three lakhs per month. And since it's a running hospital and they are very good, the doctors are extremely good. Uh, the HOD of the doctor, Dr. Ramnesh, uh, fantastic service, but they're also draining money down the line to give this kind of services. What did we do? These, these are the numbers that would slip through you for a 95 bed hospital. No matter what, 10% plus only inflation is going to happen next couple of years. The solar power plant can give you 25 active years. You can save a monthly bill, which uh, Dr. Vincent very well corroborated. Uh, with my number here, 42,000 to 1 lakhs of monthly electricity bill can be saved. 5 to 12 lakhs annual electricity bill can be saved. 2.3 crores electricity bill in the next 25 years. Friends, we talk of numbers in a monthly space in a hospital having a turnover of uh, like 2 crores or 1 crores a month. 40,000 doesn't count, cuts, cuts, the, cuts the thing. But when you accumulate it over the next 25 years, you're saving 2.3 crores. And this is without inflation. You take inflation and it becomes 17 crores right away. So what do we do? So the transform numbers could be yours. This is your transform numbers, especially the medical fraternity, whoever is attending here. 10 plus crores earning in next 25 years at 10 plus of inflation. You can have two plus crores earnings in 25 years at 0% inflation, if your inflation is not there. 12 to 15 lakhs of savings in diesel fuel yearly until your return on investment. One lakh savings per month until your ROI, after you go solarize. 25 years and counting, you will surely enjoy no bills. So this is something exciting, not just for the private sector, even for the government sector. And Rashwini rightly pointed out, or even Mr. Zaveri, 
that after five years, solar is earning a bad reputation because there is no owners. Government gives the projects five years of comprehensive maintenance. After that, government has no plan in their policy how they can get the new maintenance guys into the picture so that these invested money can be giving returns to the customer. So there is no, no sustenance. Our prime object is the reason we came from US to India is to make solar sustainable. No matter, we don't have much profits, but we want to make sure that solar gives its value down the line. We'll cut short to this. I'll just help you quickly understand it is, it is not a big, uh, big animal to take charge of or to take control of. This is a particular site plot. We do a site survey through a remote set lighting system. We do a design. We use the space that is available on roof without actually physically going to your site and we can program it to develop. We can give you a nice PD circuit diagram, how it will look like so that the customer feels confident this is how it will be deployed. So this is a design phase. This is a 3D design rendition of the rooftop solar. And I will show you exactly after we have done the solar deployment, how it looks like. So this is how it looks like. And, uh, and this is how it looks like before. So this is a doable thing. This can be have control. We can have good control. We can take the bull by its horn. And this is how it looks like. This is an example of a 100 kilowatt rooftop hybrid solar power for an hospital in Muri. And this is the gentleman or the doctor who has actually deployed this thing. And for the last two end years, I'm proud to say that when I see the doctor, he has a smiling face end to end because he has no interruption of power and he's not dependent upon the electricity board. Electricity board connection he does have, but the face-to-face -face voltage is so bad that he has burnt his CD machines twice and MRI or other couple of extra machines twice. And he doesn't have the guts or doesn't have, doesn't want to take the pain of running it through and burning the machine. Solar can give you regulated voltage supply across three phase or across two phase, whichever phase you consider. It will give a regulated supply. This is an hospital which is running totally on solar and runs with the 10 hours of backup. So daytime it produced from the sun, nighttime it has a battery. This is a simple energy flow graph in a year period of time. It can generate for about like 67,000 units per, per, per year for the amount of solar panels that they have. The batteries get charged, nighttime the batteries are delivering and the daytime the solar sun is taking care of. This is on the left-hand side, you're seeing a down regulation where solar panels are converted into DC, DC is converted into, uh, into the uh, AC and any excess energy is sent to the grid as you see on the right, line, on the right side of you through the transmission towers. These are a few uh, examples of how with an available space, people sometimes go, they need huge space. See, this is an orbit I care. This is in the heart of a city in Ranchi near Lalpuk Chow. And, and, and Ranchi, you know, is, a, is a, the land is at a premium. So whatever space that they have, there's a 20 kilowatt system running uh, in the heart of the city for an orbit I care. So this is feasible. This is a 10 kilowatt rooftop part of the primary health care center in Omanji. Uh, the roof was available. This is a government building. And this is one of the first projects that we did for government in the, uh, in, in the health sector. And this has been commissioned, uh, I guess, three years back. We, when we give, uh, when we give uh, uh, deployment, we also give it service. Yearly four services takes place. Till date, not a single complaint has come from the client and gone to the, you know, the SNAS or the state nodal agency or anything of that kind or to us because we take care of it. Our, I can request you to please wrap up now. Yeah, this is almost over now. And uh, so this is something you can keep monitoring how your uh, energy can be taken care of, how you can monitor what is the kind of generation you have. Uh, these are various examples where the rooftops are deployed for hospitals and other including grid connected or battery based system and uh, you can get your uh, uh, stats in your fingertips and uh, with this i'm almost uh, done with my presentation any uh, any uh, uh, any questions you may write it on the chat box you can reach out through uh, shwini ji and we'll be glad to help you these are something like return on investment for uh, uh, for stakeholders to know it can take between four and five years to return on your investment and next 25 years is free and uh, with this, I complete my presentation and thank you so much uh, for organizing this and giving me an opportunity to speak. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Devnaji. I, I think uh, the people who would have just seen the screen, they would have actually known what benefits DRE or solar systems can bring to the system. And, and rightly pointed out, uh, people do not think that the cost of power is rising day by day, year by year. And this is going to be uh, the scenario in the near future as well and it is going to be huge and definitely the solar with the uh, solar rooftop policy also in place and the regulation in place this can be actually a mode to actually earn and save more of their funds and which can be utilized for operation and maintenance of the plant so uh, thank you devnaji for the wonderful presentation
And now I'd move on to Sanjeev sir. So Sanjeev sir, who is the C, uh, who is the chief engineer at Creda. So uh, Chhattisgarh has been leading the solarization work in India with solarization of more than 1400 hospitals, health centers across the state of Jharkhand. So uh, with that immense experience, could you please highlight what are the learnings that we can take from uh, such state and adopt it for the state of Jharkhand as a sustainable solar solution for the health centers in the state? Sanjay, thank so you, Ashwani. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I would like to thank power of all team and all panelists and participants of this event. As you know, Chhattisgarh Renewable Energy Development Agency is a state nodal agency of MNRE for the implementation of the various renewable energy program in the state uh, since last 20 years after the formation of the state. And we were actively, aggressively implementing different activities uh, related to the renewable energy sections. And I have a presentation. I would like to share my presentation. Brief, forward, important slides I will share. Uh, uh, is it clear now? Are you getting? Yes, sir. We can see it. So we are the nodal agency of MNRE for the implementation of the RE program. We are a state designated agency under the Energy Consumption Act, implementing the law all energy efficiency, energy consumption activity. We are the state agency for the implementation of the remote village electrification program under the different scheme of Ministry of Power. And we are also the state agency for the enforcement of RPO regulation in the state under the Energy Consumption uh, Electricity Act. So these are the major activities so far in the state of Chhattisgarh. We have so far installed off-grid power plant of up to 36 megawatt at about more than 12,000 sites. On-grid power plant, 320 megawatt at 357 sites. This includes the grid-connected rooftop power plant also and mega size power plant or utility power plant. Uh, under this, this solar irrigation program, this is flagship scheme of the state government under the source social schemes so we have installed about more than one lakh solar pump. These pumps are off-grid solar pump for the irrigation facilities. And again, a very ambitious scheme under the Jal Jeevan mission to provide the drinking water in the remote areas. We have installed about 16,000 pumps in the remote locations to provide the clean drinking water to the villagers. In addition to this, we are maintaining more than 13,385 13, villages, mini grid, micro grid for the provision of the light electricity for their energy need. And we are benefiting more than 1,28,000 households. Uh, this, this is the simple uh, what we are doing in the energy uh, in the health sectors. We are providing the different uh, solar photovoltaic power plant as per the need of the health centers, it may be a primary health center or community health centers. You know, uh, earlier uh, uh, when we started this program for the electrification, village electrification in the remote areas where there is no electricity, what we found that the, particularly government building like a health centers or in schools or hostels, which we are not covered under the ministry's schemes, then we have provided a small capacity power plant on the rooftop of the health centers of, at that time it was of one kilowatt. Then we realized there's the importance of the solar photovoltaic power plant. After the installation of the solar photovoltaic power plant, the rural, rural villagers were getting the healthcare facility in the remote village villages where uh, to to uh, to to operate their energy to operate their uh, instruments and all that so why energy why electricity is uh, very important for uh, for, for the you know, health care uh, delivery mechanism and you know uh, in each and every states and each and every remote areas health infrastructure is there main power is there all infrastructure building is there but due to lack of electricity the poor villagers are not get, not getting the healthcare facility or uh, staff uh, were not uh, posted in the health centers. So uh, with the electrification of the uh, health centers, we can get the equipment functionality, staff retention, water supply for the patient and the staff. The, we, we can increase the delivery services and all uh, laboratory services, immunogenic services, outpatient services. 
So this uh, for the different health infrastructures, we, we, we are installing the different capacities of the power plant for the district hospitals. The district hospitals are in the urban area, mostly in the connected with the grid. But our target concerns with the electric health centers, which are not yet connected with the grid, conventional grid. Normally, primary health centers and sub health centers. Earlier, we installed an 8 kilowatt system for the community health centers for the different activities. And the primary health centers, these are the remotely located health centers where there is no electricity or electricity is there where they are not getting the electricity throughout the their uninter uninterrupted way. Sub health centers, very remotely located uh, health care facilities or health infrastructures where we are providing one kilowatt solar photovoltaic power. These solar photovoltaic power plant are all off grid power plant. This is not a grid connected power plant because in most of the health centers, electricity is not there or they are not getting electricity on the 24 by 7 basis. Uh, as on date, uh, we have covered uh, more than 1,495 uh, health centers. You see, community health centers out of 175 operational community centers and centers, we have installed about 165. We have energized 165. And primary health centers out of 783, we have energized 777, about 777. About 99%. And we are targeting sub health centers, which are very remotely located. And it is about about 500, 5,000. So far, we have installed about 400. In these health sub, -sub health centers, uh, one kilowatt power plant. In addition to this, under the IUC scheme of the Ministry of Power, uh, Ayurvedic and other you know, health centers, uh, we are now targeting these health centers. Uh, this is about say, 635. We have so far uh, solarized 50 health centers under these schemes. Uh, in the last 10 years, we have started this journey in 2010-11, and similarly, we, continuously, we were increasing these uh, health centers, and you see, in the last 20 years, last 12 years, uh, we have electrified about more than 1,400, and we have, we have installed each and every, we have covered each and every districts of the Chhattisgarh states remotely located. We have install, installed solar photovoltaic power plant in the community health center, primary health centers, and sub-health centers. The solar photovoltaic power plant is, as per the MNRE guidelines, uh, including the off-grid uh, battery systems, inverter systems. Uh, we are installing the lithium-ion batteries also. We are installing the maintenance-free seal, maintenance-free battery as per the MNRE specification. Uh, before installation of the solar photovoltaic power plant, we normally do the energy audit of the building. We normally prefer to replace the existing uh, uh, energy inefficient lamp in place of incandescent lamp. We provide the LED lamps in incandescent lamp. T12 tube light, we provide uh, P5 uh, uh, LED tube lights uh, recent and in place of old uh, fan, we, we replace the energy efficient fans. So these are the, the solar photovoltaic power generation generated from the solar photovoltaic power plant is being used for the different activities in the health centers. Our, our main power, uh, uh, bone, our main uh, uh, is the operation and maintenance of the solar photovoltaic power plant. We have our own dedicated robust OM operation and maintenance network. Uh, these plants were installed for a five years comprehensive maintenance contract of, uh, under the warranty period with the system integrator or the supplier or contractor of the power plant. After that, we look after for the maintenance. We have a uh, operation and maintenance network for each and every districts and our field staff or operation and staff regularly visit the hospitals or all beneficiaries organization to ensure the operation of the power plant and report us on the monthly basis to ensure the uh, functionality of the power plant. Uh, in addition to this, we are providing the water rating system for the different uh, facilities, clinical requirement in the health centers. Uh, we are providing the uh, solar photovoltaic uh, dual pump, and we call it as a dual pump because it is being installed in the existing hand pump or existing bore well of the hospital authorities, hospital campus, and we provide a 5,000 liter capacity set to provide the clean water for, uh, for their uh, all sanitation need. Uh, we have installed this type of systems also. In addition to this, we are providing the integrated street light on the campus of the hospital's uh, premises. Uh, 
Uh, we we replace all uh, existing old energy inefficient fan with energy efficient uh, fans, uh, BLDC fan or five star rated fans and tube lights. Uh, we we are now initiated the cool roof program in the all health centers, primary health center, community center. We are providing the high SRI plant on the roof of the bars and other facilities uh, to reduce the energy consumption for the cooling systems. We, we have tried for the uh, solar autoclave also. Uh, in 2018, the CWW and OXEP, uh, OXFAB have uh, visited and studied uh, the all health centers uh, which were solarized by the uh, solar photovoltaic power plant and we have received a very encouraging response uh, after this study. And uh, this has been recognized by the nationally and internationally and other also. And uh, as per the uh, report or outcome of this uh, CWW study, you can see the uh, hospital staff's uh, retention is a major uh, issue in the hospitals. Uh, now with the provision of the solar photovoltaic power plant or uh, provision of the solar photovoltaic power plant or energy security, now, now uh, they are able to retain in their uh, premises on their health centers. Uh, OPD services has been increased up to 50 to 60 percent. Outpatient services has been increased up to 70 to 80 percent. Deliveries in most of the cases, delivery has been doubled. And now the uh, patients are getting laboratory services because they are getting power for the operation of the WNS system and other laboratory instruments. Uh, these are the outcomes. The 50 percent more patients were admitted in the solar powered health centers. Uh, two times more deliveries were in the health centers, which are uh, with the solar photovoltaic power plant. And 90% PSC reported they are saving the power from the DG set. Earlier, they were providing DG set for the uh, power as a backup. Now they are not using DG sets, they are using relying on the solar photovoltaic power plant. 90% health center reported their electricity bills. And 98 persons reported that solar is helped for the day-to-day -day activities. After the installation of solar, uh, staff has been retained there. They are they prefer to stop. And with this, we, we, we are getting the support from the state government, from the national health uh, missions. And we are getting funds from the CSR. And we are getting funds for the DMF for the installation of the solar photovoltaic power, power plant, day-to-day uh, -day basis on a monthly basis uh, from all stakeholders. Uh, this this is the media coverage uh, so far uh, after the study of this and uh, as you have already mentioned that we have received award uh, international award from the Aston uh, for this intervention in the state so i can say solar is the very reliable stable and clean uh, solution for the provision of the electricity it improves the service facilities or provisions of healthcare facilities uh, that is must for the lighting and for the uh, cold chain process and water pumping and other equipment. equipment. And uh, no doubt this requires a very robust operation and maintenance network. Systems can be designed as per local need, as per the requirement what we have discussed uh, earlier. Source uh, is a primary source. Uh, we have suggested to the state uh, health department and uh, 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 central government, uh, this solar should be a part of the infrastructure in place of DG sites. Uh, we should make the mandatory the uh, solar photovoltaic power plant as an uh, infrastructure to ensure the clean power, green power on a 24 by seven basis. Uh, our target is to provide and to make a green primary health centers to cater the all requirement energy, water, waste, and building uh, with the value added component to make the green health centers or smart health centers. With this, thank you very much to all for the patient sharing. And I'm, I'm here with you uh, to provide the, any queries or any information related to the Chhattisgarh experience. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, actually, that was wonderful listening to you and wonderful presentation. It's Chhattisgarh is definitely leading this way. And uh, definitely, I think Jareda uh, would would have taken many points, especially on the ONM part and how energy efficiency is being considered, energy efficiency equipments are being considered and powering health centers as well. So uh, I'll now move on to uh, Mukesh ji, who is uh, 
uh, electrical executive engineer at Jareda. Uh, he has requested me to actually uh, move ahead uh, in this panel. So I request uh, Mukherjee to please uh, come forward and please uh, share with you since Jareda, uh, Kreda has already spoken so much. Uh, if you can please share what uh, what is that Jareda is actually looking forward to. And as we understand, uh, uh, Jareda is acting solely and largely on its own. And uh, somewhere, uh, some, somewhere, somewhere or other health department uh, has not taken that onus. So uh, Mukherjee, I would now request you to please share your points, what Jareda is actually uh, looking forward to and how in collaboration with health department, Jareda is going to take this solarization of health centers work ahead and forward. Over to you, Mukherjee. Thank you, Suneji. Uh, meetings thighs where I have request here to give us time uh, Thanks. Abhi, uh, uh, Kreda se jo chief engineer sir hai, un, uh, unka jo bhi tha, hum uh, log sunen aur uh, bahut kuch sikhne ki zarurat hai. Jo definitely jo Kreda ke tarf se kia gaya hai, usse bahut jada learning hum log le sakte hain. Aur uh, Jharkhand we are just in the starting phase definitely. Uh, we are also running a solar rooftop scheme as I think you all already know. So solar rooftop scheme, hum log basically randomly, bus, what we are doing, just, we were just selecting, select, uh, selecting randomly any government building and solarizing that. But in the last few days, after Aswani Ji, we realized that we had a lot of things to realize that it is okay that when we talk about clean energy transition, ki baat karte hai, to we have to solarize, means, uh, uh, all the buildings, all the uh, uh, utility or any facility that means required energy, so वो जरूरी है. लेकिन उसमें भी कुछ priority set करने की जरूरत है, जिसमें कि uh, health sector सबसे ज़्यादा priority वाला sector है, और health sector को हम लोगों को सबसे ज़्यादा priority देकर solution करना है उसको. हम लोगों उस पर काम शुरू भी किया है. हम लोग अभी तक झारखंड में almost more than 1000 building has been solarized already government building uh, total buildings to aur bhi zyada honge but uh, after the starting of solar rooftop scheme in jharkhand we have solarized almost 1000 number of building and in uh, in uh, that out of that 1000 th number of building approx more than 300 building are from health sector so ye to uh, or हम लोगों का ये टारगेट है कि अगले 5 सालों में अभी जैसे आप लोगों को पता होगा असुनी जी कि हम लोग के झारखंड में सोलर पॉलिसी जस्ट वी हैव जस्ट रिसेंटली लॉन्च सोलर पॉलिसी और सोलर पॉलिसी में हम लोगों ने ये टारगेट भी सेट कर कर रखा है कि अगले 5 सालों में हम लोग अप्रोक्स 250 मेगावाट हम लोग सोलर रूफटॉप पूरे झारखंड में हम लोगों को करना है तो हम लोगों का ये टारगेट रहेगा कि Apart from 250 megawatt, हम लोग at least 30 percent तो हम लोग सिर्फ और सिर्फ health sector से ही ले। Health sector के जितने भी buildings हैं, छोटे-छोटे मतलब गांवों में जो PSC हैं और CSC हैं, उन सभी को हम लोग target करें। क्योंकि हम लोग इस बात को मतलब अब हम हमारे संज्ञान में भी ये बात आ चुकी है कि health sectors को जो हम लोग solarize करते हैं, तो उसका multi dimensional effect होता है दो मिनट। मल्टी डाइमेंशनल इफेक्ट है एक तो जो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का जो कॉस्ट का जो आपका रिडक्शन है वो तो है ही उसके अलावा जो भी आपका वैक्सीन स्टोरेज है और जो पेटेंटी रेट है और बाकी डिफरेंट डिफरेंट जो और भी अलग पैरामीटर है जिस पर कि अदर पैनलिस्ट ने ऑलरेडी उस पर मतलब डिटेल में अपने अपने पॉइंट्स रखे हैं तो वो वो बहुत मतलब मल्टी डाइमेंशनल बेनिफिट है उसका तो इसको हम लोग अब ध्यान में रख रहे हैं और अभी इसके पहले जस्ट जो संजीव सर के तरफ से जो कैडा के ने जो काम किए हैं मतलब पास्ट को पिछले कुछ सालों में तो वो डेफिनेटली हमारे लिए बहुत अच्छा लर्निंग है और ये रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे कि ये मतलब आप ये पावरफुल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से अश्वनी जी से कि जो जैसे कैडा ने कुछ वर्क किए हैं और आप लोगों का जो भी इसमें वर्क है 
इस सबों को हम लोग एक साथ मिलकर झारखंड में जो है ये बात सच है कि एक अकेले से नहीं होगा आप सब लोगों का साथ चाहिए होगा इसमें और सब लोग मिलकर हम लोग इसमें झारखंड में हेल्थ सेक्टर को कम्प्लीट ट्रांसफॉर्म करें और हम लोग भी एक एग्जाम्पल सेट करें और उसमें मतलब हम लोग बेहतर हम लोग इस पर वर्क करें तो इजाजत चाहेंगे आप लोगों का थैंक यू बहुत ही अच्छा इंसान मिला हम लोगों को थैंक यू थैंक यू मुकेश जी डेफिनेटली हम लोग शेयर्ड रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी के साथ काम करना चाहते हैं और पावर फॉर ऑल जो है जेरेडा के साथ पार्टनर करके और हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट के साथ पार्टनर करके इस काम को आगे ले जाना चाहता है और इसमें डेफिनेटली हम लोग संजीव जी को आई थिंक वो एक की पर्सन हो सकते हैं जो हम लोग को गाइड कर सकते हैं ही कैन बी अ मेंटर और ही कैन बी अ गाइड फॉर दिस थिंग एंड प्रोबली मिलकर हम लोग इसको जो है झारखंड में भी इम्प्लीमेंट करेंगे और कर सकते हैं एंड वी लुक फॉरवर्ड फॉर द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम जेरेडा एंड अदर सी एस ओज एंड डेवलपर्स एज वेल जिनके साथ हम लोग मिल करके अभी कुछ ना कुछ हमेशा समय समय से करते रहेंगे तो थैंक यू मुकेश जी इतना संक्षेप में आप अपनी अपने बात रख दी थैंक यू सो मच नाउ आई लाइक टू कॉल अपॉन आकांक्षा फ्रॉम डब्ल्यू आर आई इंडिया सो आकांक्षा सिंस आई ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज कीप योर थाट्स टू लिमिट योर थाट्स इन फाइव मिनट्स सो दैट अदर स्पीकर ऑल्सो हैव the time to speak and we can also address the questions raised as well so akansha uh, w harai uh, had come up with an energy ex access explorer couple of months back right which was quite a useful and an interesting tool for taking informed decision on the ground right in general uh, there is often no data available with the government uh, to take swift actions and so would i would request you to please uh speak about on that tool and how that tool can actually help in providing better access to electricity for the health and especially for the state of jharkhand in rural and uh, tribal domain as you know jharkhand is a tribal state right over to you akansha thank you ashwini and uh, what i'll do is i'll just quickly you know walk you through a use case and since we all know that we are you know uh, living in a uh, how do i say so we are in a resource constraint setting it's uh, we have limited resources and we uh, can you know use those resources to uh, so uh, you know identify one of the you know uh, prioritize the area or identify the uh, resources so in a resource constraint setting it becomes equally important that you know we use evidence based decisions so that the decisions which are taken are you know most optimal and we can use the resources in the best possible way i completely agree there's a problem with the data. data and especially open source data so what we have done is we have created an energy access explorer this is an open source geo spatial tool which you know synthesizes data from different sets for different sectors like health education demographics and supply and uh, users can see demand supply and uh, you know demand and energy at uh, uh, sorry demand and supply at the same time so that uh, it can take evidence based decisions so if we are talking about health let's quickly jump to uh, geo location suppose we want to solarize some different health facilities we can solarize them uh, either directly let's solarize district hospital first or go solarize uh, chcs first and then phcs but we can also give a criteria and solarize the facilities which have problem of electricity so say uh, we start solarizing uh, so in chcs we have uh, you know a different kind of category categorization in terms of uh, reliability of power supply so if i have to solarize i would prefer to solarize a facility which has regular power cuts with a vis which has continuous power supply because which it gets 24/7 power supply so if i have regular power supply you can see the location of the facilities on the map and uh, we also have global horizontal irradiance which is very important when we are trying to solarize a facility why because ghi is the amount of uh, solar irradiation which is coming on the ground so this is the uh, basically how much of ghi is coming this will also de uh, define the size of our pv system so if you will see on the system uh, you know you will see the data and you can see the different analysis but if we we'll go to the uh, analysis part you can see what is you know energy access potential what is the demand index the literature says if uh, if you have to solarize and a system has to be efficient ghi value should be more than above 17 uh, 1700 so let us put the value to say 1700 and you will get the area which has to be prioritized you can take it at 1750 for a better efficient system because more the ghi value more it will it will be better in the terms of the pv size and the pv outputs 
So uh, you can see which of the area which has to be uh, prioritized first. We can also uh, change the priority criteria to say 25 kilometers uh, around the district hospitals. So it will tell you what is the area share and what is the population which is dependent on the particular facility. So, uh, you know, you can change the criteria, you can actually add a road network if you know if a facility is nearer to the road network and how do you want to play around with it. If you want to have uh, the distance of five kilometer or 10 kilometer, because our research on the ground with the data has told us there's an average distance of uh, electrified PHC is around 870 meters, uh, they are nearer to the road network and an unelectrified PHC is 1.7 kilometers. So this also tells that road network becomes very important because you have to supply, you have to take uh, the supply there and you have to think of operations and maintenance. So EAE, uh, Energy Access Explorer tool, it can be used to, you know, prioritize the different health facilities. You can uh, prioritize on the basis of the building types. Uh, we have the data on the buildings. If the building is rented, if it is rent free or if it is there, you have the data in terms of electricity, the type of electricity coming, the reliability of the electricity. So that uh, in a resource constraint setting, best possible decisions can be taken. The tool is online and it can be, I'll share the link here and uh, you can go through it and we can connect later on. And on uh, the positive of time, I'll just stop here, Ashwin. Thank you, Akansha, for being precise and to the point. Uh, I think this is going to be a very useful tool for the government and as well as for us or any project developer to actually take any project in any location in the state. Probably this is something uh, which all the developers and the state would look forward to. So thank you for uh, sharing this, uh, Akansha. Now I'd like to call upon uh, Vinuta, who is the CEO of Asar Social Impact. Uh, Vinuta, uh, Asar has been working in Jharkhand, Jharkhand for quite some time now. And you also know that Jharkhand is a tribal state and also it also reels with a resource curse, right? So the state is largely dependent on coal power plants, uh, power being purchased uh, from uh, outside the state and uh, to add to it the state has also developed a certain stigma on solar especially uh, the health sector which thinks that this health initiatives or these kind of initiatives is not going to work and this has been developed this has been the perception developed on the mark uh, when the first solar plant a few solar plants was installed in the state some 10 to 15 years back. So Vinita, uh, in your experience, and if you can, I'd request you to please share your thoughts on how to change this perception and uh, make it more acceptable and adoptable solutions for the health centers, along with what role media can play around it. Vinita, over to you. I'll request you to please uh, keep your thoughts uh, within five, five to six minutes, if that's possible. Vinita? Uh, Vinita, if you are speaking, uh, we're not able to hear you. Uh, I think uh, there was some connection issues uh, on Vinita's side because she was here. Nevertheless, uh, uh, if she come back, uh, we'll get back to her. And I'd like to uh, now take this conversation to uh, uh, Ramapati ji. Probably uh, Rama is not here and uh, Arvind ji is going to talk uh, on behalf of SEED. So Arvind uh, ji is the project di means director programs and communications over there. So uh, Arvind ji, if you can please share uh, uh, what I mean, seed has been working in the sector uh, con for considerable amount of time, especially in the, the roles of policy, regulation, advocacy. So, uh, keeping that uh, things in mind, uh, what are the key steps uh, to actually strengthen this initiative of solarizing health value chain, and how should we move ahead with it? Arvindji, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Aswini. Uh, uh, Ramapati is basically uh, traveling to Singroli for uh, some of the works related to just uh, energy transition in the region. Uh, so I'm replacing him. And uh, Seed had been engaged in uh, some of the uh, uh, 
uh, research related themes on the solar health sector, uh, augmenting the health infrastructure through the cleaner models. So we have uh, already shown out some of the reports in Bihar and also uh, uh, scheduled to launch a DRE roadmap for the health infrastructure in Jharkhand. So, so based on the some of the things, uh, learnings and the research related thing from the previous projects, and also whatever the notable speaker has uh, mentioned in a very precise and elaborated, elaborated form. So I will uh, I will give my perspective on what are the things that can be uh, lead towards the way ahead uh, in terms of the entire uh, solarization of the health sector related uh, topic. So one is uh, the starting point is like DRE can be game changer in uh, strengthening the rural health infrastructure, considering the uh, Jharkhand has a decentralized health infrastructure and largely uh, works in a rural hinterland or geographically terrain area. So DRE can be a catalyst to facilitate many of the existing delivery models to improve the reach of uh, the quality services related to energy access and also the health. So one way you look at the broader uh, theme or the templates, which can be in terms of uh, position as a, uh, the enablers to resolve the riddles of the health and energy nexus, and also look at the uh, policy framework that strengthen the health energy integration. So often we have uh, witnessed that uh, despite having the intertwined uh, role of uh, uh, between energy and health sector, uh, there has been uh, uh, the instances that they have been say, uh, dealt with separately and they save them to work together. So now the time has arrived considering the COVID related experiences. So how that can be capitalized into a kind of a model uh, rather we can say a well-defined roadmap where health and energy integration can be uh, uh, accumulated or uh, promoted as an enabling framework with a multi-stakeholder uh, approach, largely uh, comprised of government, non-government, private, civil society realms, so that the, uh, the, uh, the goal of universal health coverage or the sustainable go uh, development goals that can be achieved. So the, uh, the initiative taken by the uh, government of Jharkhand, Jerada has been commendable. Even the, they have recently launched a solar policy and they have also uh, have a very ambitious target. But uh, with all humility and uh, taking consideration of the, some of the observation made by notable speakers, so we can uh, deduce that there are lots of things that to be uh, done in the uh, visionary uh, manner. Like one can be that whatever we do in terms of the policy framework, that should have a community-centric model. So largely looking at the perspective or the needs of the tribals, minority, and weaker section, and take a holistic approach of the inclusive development in that entire energy paradigm. And DRE or the clean energy model can be node of public policy formulation. And we can also learn from the uh, practices, best practices, success stories from the similar geography, like Chhattisgarh, like uh, we have seen just uh, from the Kreda. We have also something from Northeast, some of the uh, panelist speaker also have been uh, associated with some of the projects in a different role. And like uh, some of the speakers are already mentioned about some of the things is also happening in uh, Ranchi, Khunti, uh, Palamu and Jamsitpur as well. So what essentially required is a kind of a repository and documentation of these best practices and to put in a kind of a public domain so that a better informed public policy formulation a wider mass Agnes program can be emulated. Uh, on a larger uh, uh, perspective, we can also think of like uh, proposing a kind of a DRE mission for the state, right? So that uh, the cleaner energy led development paradigm can be mode of uh, the whatever the, uh, the new uh, related, uh, goals related to zero net emission and all the things can be achieved. So, uh, if it is a DRE mission, uh, that should be a kind of a, uh, working in a kind of inter uh, uh, convergent mood aligned with the key departments and agencies and also aligning the goal of national health mission and energy department to meet their objectives. 
So we can also think about like solarization of a healthcare program or also looking uh, towards a solar for mother and child care, particularly in the rural region. And also augmenting the infrastructure through DRE means in the PSC, CHE and the, from the rural regions. So what essentially needs a, a financing mechanism, largely from the public uh, finance, also coming from the multilateral or bilateral donor agency, also through CSR funding, also to private financing institution. So there are a host of routes that can be channelized. As uh, most of the people know here that national health policy also talks about like uh, it's increasing the spending, uh, health related spending in the GDP. So like largely into like at least 8% for the state government. So how that can be prioritized and how the new avenues for the financing can be done to upscale the infrastructure and also to uh, plug the uh, loopholes of the technological upgradation and also sound human resource management. So one, uh, one approach can be a dedicated state fund for this uh, uh, scenario. And another thing is that uh, most of the speakers have already mentioned about some of the innovative technology, solar solutions that are, that, that are changing uh, the land scope of the rural, rural region. So access to innovative uh, technology, capacity building, and also how the mass awareness programs can be done. So right from the bottom of approach, like training the Sahiya and M, Anganwadi Sevika, and also to medical staff about the portable solution models to also uh, to the OM of the like some of the things related to the health institutions. Also providing a kind of a support mechanism through DR developers, a kind of a mechanism through like Jirida like how that can be realized in the kind of service contract that, that has a kind of a sustainability uh, to uh, have a kind of a better capacity building uh, mechanism in place. Also considering that most of the, I, most of the PAC CCs lack or uh, uh, have a kind of, uh, have a, this situation that they, don't, they do not follow the IPSC guideline like Indian Public Health Service Standard. So there should be a kind of a auditing, monitoring and evaluation of these center so that in a uh, like a, we can have a better uh, functioning infrastructure to the last mile connectivity to augmenting uh, not only uh, health services but also the energy access in the rural region and like a uh, covid scenario has uh, uh, given us such uh, sound uh, learnings and some of the shock as well that they will need to look towards a uh, kind of a visionary approach a new policy and roadmap so that, that that needs to be taken care. So there is ample opportunity of, of solarization of healthcare in the health sector. And this can be run through the twin objective of enhancing energy security to the health institution and also simultaneously increasing access to the health services to the people in the dire needs. So I conclude uh, my uh, presentation uh, with this uh, uh, note. And over to you, Aswini. Thank you, Arvindji. Uh, I I think I echo with you what you have said. Um, documentation of all those things is required. All those experiences are required. And at Power for All, uh, we do such kind of initiatives. We have been doing such kind of initiatives in the past. And here also now, we are going to uh, get links from Selco and others from your organization, Devnaji and all. We'll take those learnings and we'll, we'll share those kind of success stories uh, with the public as well so that they also know and i'm sure uh, there are uh, people from nhm also here uh, they are also getting quite immense views and um, definitely a roadmap is required and a dre mission which you talked about is something which is uh, which might be very useful uh, knowing that there is a dre policy now in place by government of india so dre mission uh, should be a likely step by the state as well so thank you arvindji uh, for sharing your thoughts uh, now I'd like to call upon Munna from Asar, Munna Jha. Uh, he is the he is the head of uh, communications in Asar. And since uh, Vinuta was not able to join because of some internet network issue, uh, I'll now call upon uh, Munna to actually share his views on how uh, this perception change of perception can be made in this sector in the state of Jharkhand, and how media can play a great role towards it. Munna, please go ahead. Over to you. Thank you, Aswani. Uh, it was accidental that I had to come suddenly. 
बातचीत करने के लिए मैं पूरी बातचीत में भी नहीं था मतलब आप मतलब कभी आ रहा था कभी जा रहा था पर हाँ मतलब सभी सभी साथियों को जोहार मैं चाईबासा का ही रहने वाला हूँ लेकिन मुन्ना जी सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट आई थिंक विनुता इज आल्सो हियर ओके विनुता इफ यू कैन हियर अस विनुता जस्ट मोमेंट Vinita can you hear us? Ah uh, yes can you hear me? Yeah yeah Vinita thank you for joining okay. I we understand that you have some network issue at your side so uh, what uh, we wanted to hear from you is how actually communications uh, can play a larger role in actually taking this context uh, forward and how it can actually help in removing certain stigma which has been present at the health centers where they think that solar cannot actually work so this stigma was developed some time back when sure thank you so over to you vinita thank you uh thank you ashwini and uh thanks to power for all for organizing this i'm really sorry my network is a little bad it was very good for uh, about one hour and then it sort of dropped uh i i think uh is changing very fast as well because there is now uh, a clear indication that uh, india as a country is going to move to uh, renewable energy uh, uh, and uh, i mean over a period of time we are actually going to uh, ambitiously increase our uh, 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 shift to sustainable energy sources is going to also change uh, where the implementation of these programs actually happens so i believe that uh, there is going to be a new sort of momentum for this shift uh, and in that context uh, the role of all you know all the stakeholders here increase awareness on the efficacy which is uh, very clear from all the presentations made of how uh, decentralized renewable energy and sustainable energy can deliver uh, the needs of the healthcare system and in fact not just deliver the needs but actually greatly improve uh, the health outcomes as was shown in multiple presentations um so i am actually very hopeful of what is uh, going to happen from here on but as you pointed out ashwini at the start uh it's important that different stakeholders come together to work for towards this goal uh it is not sufficient for uh, it merely to be a technology solution or only the healthcare people to ask for it or only the energy people to propose it it needs for everyone to come together and i think uh, there was a very important point made that actually in the healthcare system all of us are not speaking about the demand side which is the patients uh and the need for good healthcare quality healthcare so i think that one of the things that um you know we'd definitely like to work on and improve is bringing on board uh civil society groups from the demand perspective to say that this is a good way to deliver quality healthcare uh for the people and bring the people on board uh because you know which mother doesn't want to make sure that uh she can deliver her child as close to home as possible uh as long as the you know the the services are available so i think that uh we also need to make sure that awareness from the demand perspective is uh is made of course the health professionals need to uh see that this is working and there is uh communication uh, challenges and myths that we need to break uh there but now given the number of successes and the case studies and the data that is being showed including you know the presentation from mr jain from creda uh, i don't see that uh, there is going to be uh, i i mean i'm i'm very hopeful that there's enough information available and that communications uh, can be built uh, to ensure that it reaches the right audiences and i would really like to also see uh you know the demand from public come for much better quality available very quickly uh which renewable can provide i'll stop there thank you i hope 
I was audible. Yes, Vinita, you were audible. Uh, and to the point, I think the point you made is quite apt. And yes, it is required that uh, we get the demands from uh, the public itself being generated. And those we have ample of studies, we have ample of case studies with us, which we can draw the conclusion into. And uh, this definitely a media can also play a greater part. And we as a group needs to come forward. And that is why we are also proposing to have actually a health task force being made, which can actually navigate these things to various parts of the state as well. And that is how uh, we want to conclude this session as well. So uh, thank you, Vinita, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, I would now like quickly, uh, since we are already over time, and uh, I think we have a few questions with us, uh, but uh, if it's okay, then we can go on for next uh, two minutes and then we can probably wrap up the session. And uh, whatever questions you have, we can definitely take it. You can share it on my mail. I'll share the, my email here. You can just share us on that and we would get that question answered for you. So uh, Devanjana, if you'd like to come in and if you want to point out something, please. Thank you, Ashwini. It has been a wonderful session. on the this is this is a, a first of the many webinars that we'll be having and we'll continue to engage with the CSOs with the government with medical professionals in our way forward and uh, yeah with that without any uh, delaying any further thank you for your patience and for joining in for this extremely important work for part for all our next steps would be to conduct an evidence-based um, case study, an evidence-based program wherein we would like to understand what are the solarization needs in Jharkhand. And for that, we'll be reaching out to some of you. So kindly uh, look at your inboxes. Um, and thank you again for joining in. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.